All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. We're going to be having a look at Hand of the Gods today, also known as Smite Tactics. I didn't originally realize why it had been called Hand of the Gods. Like, ah, card game Hand of the... Eh. So it's kind of, it's half card game, half tactics. We're seeing a little bit of a shift in that direction as of late. Duelist is one of the ones that did it first. Not the first, but one of the first. And Smite's a pretty good universe to do it in. Having the ancient gods fighting each other is a pretty cool thing. I like the original Smite quite a lot, so I might dig it. I guess we're going to find out. It's been in early beta for a while. It's now on Steam, so we're going to have a bit of a dig into it. It's free to play, incidentally, so all the usual trappings of that, buying card packs, all that kind of bullshit. I don't really mind that, but of course a lot of people do. So let's dive into what happens. Wake up. We need you. Anubis, he was always my favorite, because it was the first one I ever played. I absolutely dumpstered five games, journalistic games, come with that guy. But we literally did two on five, myself and my cameraman, and we just destroyed them. Uh, seriously, when I say a lot of games, journalists are maybe not that great. At certain games, I'm not kidding. I've seen it firsthand. I went 36 and 1, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Alright. That's not very nice, is it? Yeah, right, so you got the ob obvious tactics layer here. But also the card aspect as well. I mean, those two things fit together pretty well. So they're fairly logical increase in things that's two spiders that doesn't seem good at all i bet there's an ability oh attacking an adjacent melee unit will make you take a return damage attack the spiderling here all right so that attacks you back i assume we get the same benefit right spiderling attacks us and then we just smack it in the head yeah well there is still time Hurry, while there was still time in this entirely turn-based experience. Well, that was less dramatic than expected. <laughs> yes, this is PUBG. It's the new patch. They open a lot of packs later because they have a starter pack and stuff, so I picked that up, needless to say. Can you feel it? Your power is returning. Your faith will cry out for you. Remember. I was murdered. Yes, you were. You? Why are you here? I helped to free you through my domain. But you were trapped in Hades. <sighs> Betrayal. How the fuck did Anibus Olympus screw with Hades? Fallen. The Eye of Ra is lost. The Norse say Ragnarok has come. Someone is coming. Alright, so how does this work then? <laughs> Your brother will be so pleased. What of my brother? Weak gold fool. You have no idea what's happened. This world is no longer yours. Play some cards to defeat them. <laughs> I always find it any attempt to put big dramatic stuff into a card game to be hilarious. But then I do remember, oh, Yu-Gi-Oh. All right. Yeah, it's going to be deployed near the summoning stone. All right, just put it there. So that's fine. Unit you know, spawn exhausted. Can't dash to that turn. All right, yep, makes sense. Oh, you can attack the angler. You can't right. Win. Your faithful are scattered. You are weak and alone. You are never alone. Your daughter awaits. All right, Athena. 
Go fuck shit up. So that's a war cry. Yep, the defy deploy anywhere on the battlefield in two damage to adjacent enemy. So stick it right in the middle and she blows shit up. Yeah, that would be that would be pretty good. Father, you are alive, Athena. Still sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. The high res of a fixed tribe. Tribes is dead, mate. Sorry. Sorry to tell you that. Sorry to let you know, but it's definitely very dead. I'm sure the VA is probably not the most concerning thing for a card game. Especially once we get past this damn tutorial, we're not worried so much about the stupid story anymore. Deathbringer is a spell card that increases the attack of a unit. Alright, double the attack base as a friendly unit. Okay, whack it on Athena and then she can absolutely murder him. There we go. Select a marksman. Yeah, I can see where this is going. It's quite fast paced for a tactics game, which is interesting. Necessary for a multiplayer, certainly. Attack the summoning stone. There we go. Father, I knew you would return to us somehow. Athena. I don't. I am so weak. That is not how I I'm envisioned I Athena speaking, though. I do what admit that. We are at war, Father, and many have fallen. Come, there is much to tell. All right. I really don't want to hear more about that, but we do have the third tutorial to do before we can actually play it for real, so let's do that. Learn how to use items as you fight your first open field battle. All right. Hurry, Definitely still is a bit the of polish. Far. We must get you to safety. What happened here? Our armies invaded the kingdom of the sun. Ares led them. He now rules in Ra's place. We invaded? Why? It was believed Egyptians murdered your father. Olympus wanted revenge, and Ares gave it to them. Why would Anubis help then? To clear his name. Come, father, we must hurry. And you are not thinking clearly. But who killed me? Blast! Agents of the enemy, we must fight! We had mixed been like, here's a subtitle and here's a speech bubble. Yeah, but, I mean, obviously I don't expect them to have this all cleared up in early access. Like, they've still got temporary art for shit and everything, but Jesus. That's a little messy, isn't it? Alright, every turn you have access to a leader ability that costs two mana to use. Okay, so that's a buff thing. Adjacent friendly summoning stone cannot be targeted by attacks or warcry effect. Oh, so you could still do that even in a tactics game. All right. But you are still vulnerable. There you go. We'll get rid of that. We need help. You bye bye, Mr. Maboon. Alright, so you start with two mana and it goes at one per turn by the looks of it. Alright, let's see what we got. Deal two damage to you, control two or more gods, which I don't. Spartans. Let's protect one, I assume that's probably armor. Some description. Animation seemed pretty slick and quick as well. Nothing was the animation is dragging on too fucking long, a hearthstone. It's terrible for that. So if I use him, in theory I shouldn't get any return damage. Yeah, that's exactly how that works. Okay. Let's get another card. Oh, button. There we go. Let's 
Again, I, um, I understand for the most part. And you definitely kind of want to do your moves before your attacks. Because if you don't, then... Oh, I should have just buffed if I could have ended it there. I assume that doesn't apply to the summoning stone. No, it does not. All right. So the order in which you do things is quite important. nothing for you there that I will see it for myself you have my thanks I do not need your thanks this all started with you you must restore order before it is too late then join me I will need more allies in this chaos hmm. another day perhaps I have allies in the wilderness father we should seek them out no I must see home first Alright, that's that, and that's pretty much it for the tutorial. So, let's open packs and actually get into multiplayer, which is the interesting bit. Oh, I've got way more than that. As you can see, I've got a few more than that. I've got the starter pack, so... That is an obnoxiously long card animation opening, and I really hope that you can skip that, because that would be real damn annoying if you couldn't. Alright. Sure does look like things. So there's a- I think there are sets and suits, so like, depending on which pantheon you pick. No! What? Don't force me to do this shit! Oh, f fine, whatever. I always prefer the Egyptians, so sure, we'll go with that. Apparently we're doing a casual match, or I could just go backwards and say, fuck that. But working on a starter deck is probably the way to go. Today I fight not for Olympus, but for myself. The sun has risen once again. Ra's the best. Okay. Chaos spawn, you say? Let's toss those two. There we go. Oh, so I'm going second, so it's a good old mana potion thing, right? Nope! No referral bullshit for you. I'm not having that shit. I know exactly what you were, you're thinking. No way. Not after last time. Let's get Sobek out. For a god, he is not well started, is he? Let's see, so that's Neath, whenever friendly is healed, gain global. Yeah, so there's a lot of- seems like the Egyptians have a lot of healing stuff going on. Because Sobek gets buffed on that as well. Hmm, that's a nice one to put out early. Probably should have put him out early instead of the god, actually. Alright, let's see what we got. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this deck. We'll get the white tiger out. How far can everything move? Is that like... This is not a movement stat. Is everything just two squares in movement? It seems that way. I'm gonna stay there. There's no point in me going in there and fighting that. I'm not gonna burn that yet either. What's Ra's ability? We store one health to a friend. Oh, okay. So he, his actual ability lets you do that? Right, that's actually pretty strong then. So if I went in there and attacked, burned the mana, and then got the buff, that would be pretty good. I'm not sure if this is the right thing to do, but let's, uh, let's just experiment with it. So if I use this, I can then use that. And that buffs him up. Yeah, okay, that's pretty strong. Hmm. 
Melee units have a movement of three and range have two. Okay. That would have been interesting information to be given in the tutorial, but okay. <laughs> Guess it's not that important. And if we heal him, of course... That's the nice thing about this. Sobek's gonna... If we just keep healing him, that's gonna be a real mess to deal with. Push this guy forward. So it heals in a column. So if we go here, attack from this direction, and then we do the column heal. The glow. It's super effective. There we go. Did you just skip that entirely? Because that's kind of weird. It's like, I don't know, maybe fight? They might have just given up, I don't know. Or it's a bot. It's entirely possible it's just a bot. Hearthstone plus XCOM. I don't like the XCOM comparison. Alright. Th think Final Fantasy Tactics instead. Think a traditional top-down tactics game as opposed to that. XCOM really is not that, you know. There's a lot of abilities. It's very based on things like verticality, cover, line of sight. None of that's in this game. Think those more traditional tactics games, and then you've got a better idea. Like I said, it's just collectible tactics, which is not new. Uh, Duelist's done it. That's probably the first big multiplayer competitive example that I know of anyway, at least the modern era on PC. But collectible tactics will certainly become a thing. This has got the, the, hey, collectible card game feel, but the tactics element. Farrier is that, of course. That's just done on a hex. Alright, assuming do. So, Neath seems really strong. Whenever her friend is healed, gain globe. Oh my god, what? Alright, so she can literally shoot from there. That's... That's interesting. Alright. I uh, don't wanna... Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna... Oh yeah, so if I... Bat him... Neath can just... Yeah, I see where this is going. Alright, so I'm gonna do this, do that... Heal up the column to give Neath global range, and then pick her off that way. That's pretty good! Because why not? I already like this idea. I'm gonna, uh, gonna, like, open some packs and probably build around this whole healing idea. Good game. The you know, Ra's starter deck seems pretty sensible, and is clearly built around a notion, so... Nope! No, 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 no referring friends here, thank you. So I have no idea if I'll play the game long enough for it to even matter. We know what happened last time, we're not doing that shit. Alright. Although I have a feeling... ...that... What was I thinking? Oh yeah, sorry, I lost track of my thoughts there. I have a feeling that they probably did the referral system better, because they've been doing referrals for a while. Alright, so I got 29 core packs that I got from the starter set. I think I got a couple of gods as well. Yes, yeah, so maybe the start. yeah, I think these starter decks were probably given to me, maybe. I, I don't even know. Um, so these are the six current suits, it looks like. For the different... So the Mayan Pantheon's there. That's the Norse Pantheon. That's the sort of Roman Pantheon. The Greek Pantheon, the Egyptian Pantheon, and the Chinese Pantheon, I assume. Uh, we're gonna go with the Egyptian one for the time being. Let's open some packs and see what happens. And we'll see what we can do about maybe making that. This is gonna take a while if they keep doing this shit. I wish they wouldn't. I really wish they wouldn't. 
Come on, you need you need to skip through. This takes forever. This is longer than a Hearthstone, and that's bad enough. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, fix this, please. That's the first thing you should be doing. I'm just having them, like, all opened. There is no skip button that I know, and there doesn't seem to be a mass open button either, so... That's that. Well, not exactly doing well in the Egyptian cars right now, are we? Hearthstones is quite skippable. Yes, you can accelerate a lot. This is not, and is horrible. Oh, we got a legendary in there somewhere. What's that all about? Oh, it's a legendary Roman god. Oh, that's a shame. I was like, if I open packs at the start of a game, I often base my decks around how many legendaries I happen to have. It's like, let's just oh, it's legendary. Let's build a deck around that because it's great, and it feels bad not to use it. Uh, is the pack opening noise too loud? By the way, because it sounds really loud on this end. For some reason it opens like one of them at random. Oh, I'm glad it's fine. Yeah, it's very clearly early access. Like there's obviously a lot to be done here. There's still a bunch of temporary art and everything. The core gameplay so far seems pretty solid though. quite enjoyed what I played there, so I want to play a bit more of it. Oh, so... Ah. So it actually... According to the chat, anyway, I don't know if they're right about this. Apparently, if you already have the card, it just opens face up. And the new stuff is face down. You know what uh, is really good for indicating that? Telling people. <laughs> Ooh. It's gold. Shiny. I wonder if that makes any difference to its character model on the board. Because those, those would be quite valuable, I think. Like, people would probably lust after that if they made some pretty uh, serious changes to the character model. Yeah, I don't know what it means by free gold. Again, all this stuff could be very just broken in the early build. So I don't think I've got much in the way of Egyptian stuff. And certainly nothing much in the way of legendaries either, which is highly disappointing. Give me shiny legendaries! Let's be honest, it's the only reason we play these games. I'm gonna shove our giant e-penis through the medium of cards. I'm not really reading most of these. I'm gonna be going to the deck builder after this to see what I can do about that raw deck. How much does a car pack cost if you don't have free ones? That's a great question. I'll try and find out. It's probably about the same as Hearthstone, I think. That was uh, epic in there somewhere. Oh, it's an epic Mayan god. Yeah, of course it is. Anything except the stuff that I want. Looks so much like Hearthstone's not funny. Well, it's not in any way like Hearthstone, but alright. Like, there's only so many ways you can make opening a pack look different. Come on. Let's be reasonable now. The game clearly doesn't play like Hearthstone. I mean, it's barely even the same genre. Yeah, I would- I really want an option to skip this. Ooh, look, a golden rare. How shiny. Yeah, it's fun the first few times you see the animation, then you just want it to be over. Apparently, I'm not doing all that well on the luck side of things, because I only got one legendary out of 30 packs, which is a pretty low rate, actually. Now, 
This is gameplay. It's a collectible card game. Opening packs is the gameplay. Yeah, one legendary 30 packs. That's uh, a bit stingy. Either that or I'm just unlucky. Uh, let's so cost wise, it's 300 favor for a pack. Runes, 75 runes a pack. How much are runes? Fucking god, that's fun buck bullshit. Uh, so we have 200 runes for five dollars. Great. D I hate that. It's like, it doesn't divide into itself. Fuck off. It's like, don't- Oh, we're not gonna sell the same amount because we're a sack of bastards. I do hate it when they do it. They do for 40. 40 packs. You want to buy that? Uh, $35 for that. So, you know, about 90 cents a pack. And obviously it goes down as you buy more, but... Yeah, I, I just sell them for money. Don't do the. Because I don't think this is even. It's not even um, a system where you can use it in multiple games, can you? It'd be okay if this currency, the fun buck currency, was used across multiple high res games. But it's not. It's. I've got God knows how many crystals in Smite. Uh, they can't be transferred to any other game. Paladins has a new currency that you can't transfer to other games. It's just. It's a waste of everyone's fucking time. It's irritating. But yeah, you could go for... Well, I'm trying to see like what the lowest divisible rate is. If you get 800... Yeah, the, the best thing you could... No, that, that would be bad too. Either way, it's pretty... It's crappy. That's, I don't think there's a, another way around that. It's just... Crap! You can blame League of Legends mostly for that. Continuing to push that policy. If you get 800, you can buy 11 packs. Yeah, by buying like one set and then another. But then you end up buying the another set at a less efficient rate. Which is just kind of a kick in the teeth, really. <laughs> uh, I don't really like it. I will say I do like the fact that at least selling packs with preset units in them. So, if you're after a certain set of cards, you can get them. Otherwise, of course, you're earning via favor. So, it was like 300 favor for a pack. I have three quests at the moment that would give me, like, almost you know, like almost 500 favor. And I don't know if you're getting favor for wins. You might be. It's possible. Sure, I have a different card back. Why not? And these are interesting, certainly. Uh, alright. Let's see what we can do about deck building. So there's 25 cards by the looks of it. So this is Ra's default deck. That's quite nice. Oh, the, I'm sorry, what was it in Infer Inferno Cannon came up as like this fruit or something? I think I was going through too many too fast. Yeah, it's a nice that little uh, characters pop out. That's pretty cool. So you can kind of clearly see how many you've got. The limit is probably two by the looks of it. Yeah, that seems to work fine. Disenchant extra. Uh, yep, I guess I do have some dupes. That gets me 52 of whatever the hell that is. Uh, and when it comes to crafting, uh, God knows. So it's like 8 for a common. 25 for a rare. That doesn't seem like there's a lot of filtering in this deck editor yet. Can't filter down, there's no keywords. Yeah, they've got to do a lot with this. So I guess the fire giant's probably a neutral. Legendary is 320 of the crafting material. Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems to be. 
I, it's hard to know, like, you know, because I don't really have a massive basis for comparison, but it seems like a reasonably re reasonable crafting rate, but it's hard to say. I, God, is there, please tell me there's at least a way to filter down by things I actually have. You can filter by neutrals and by Egyptian-specific stuff, but it's showing me cards I don't even fucking have. I'm like, well, what use is that? Uh, and I want to know what cards I do have. Oh, so you can actually have different skinned versions of Ra if you want, for some reason. Which, I guess, is a way to sell people on that, sure. Warriors! Trying to see what I've got in terms of good units. It also doesn't show what... what... Okay, innocent. shut up! We don't need a really long quote every time we select you. Yeah, but you can't make comparisons like that. It's like, well, yeah, Hearthstone requires 1,600 dust. Yeah, but you're not getting the same amount in here. Like, it's not a comparable currency rate. <laughs> I, I disage added, what, 17 commons, like 7 rares, and got, what, about 45 of this? That's a lot lower than dust would be. So that's not comparable at all. I'm not sure why people are trying to do that. I was just flying past. Apparently I have Isis. I'm not sure where I got her from, but it's prob probably from one of the starter packs I got. You know, as much as I like these animations, the... They are a little obnoxious to have thrown at you every time you're trying to select a card. Maybe don't do that. Evil doesn't stand a chance. That seems really strong. Oh god, I hate that as well. That's uh If you I don't like deck builders that don't let you go over the limit because it makes it easier to then pair down afterwards. Please stop that. I, I don't know if Hearthstone lets you do that, but it certainly didn't used to. Let people go over the limit so they can pare it down. God damn it. Sure, you can calculate the difference between Hearthstone and this game's crafting rates. Feel free to do the math on that, because you clearly haven't. Uh, well, I don't even want to mess with it, really. Yeah, I mean, honestly, my feeling about this at the moment is that it's not really ready for playing. Like, this, the deck build is just such a mess, and there's so much incomplete in it. The, the core gameplay seems fun, but I don't really want to waste... There's a lot of games I could be playing that are way more complete than this, you know? Like, I could be playing Faria, which does this a lot better right now. Duelist does it a lot better right now. Like, this seems like... It needs a lot more time in the oven to really be worth looking at. And I'll probably come back and look at it later on down the line. I just don't want to be messing around with deck editing when the deck edit is obviously so, so early in development and things like that. Yeah, I think I'll play something else. I'm not really too keen on streaming any more of this until they become a little further down the line in development. It's just a little, uh, little too much, a little too much nonsense. You know, I should take this uh, excuse to play some more Faria. Let's see if I can. I have to see if I can log into my Faria account. Do I still have Faria installed? So, uh, what have I got installed? There's a couple of games that came out today that I put on. Or I could play a bit more Absolver. I'm still trying to get the hang of that. Just gonna have a look through Steam and see what I feel like playing. You know, I might even play just some more Tooth and Tail. Because you know what? I actually really like that. The other thing I was wanting to look at was, um... Oriental Empires just came out of Early Access, which is a turn-based 4X with, I think it's a Total War style game. 
but I'm not sure I want to dive into that right now. Yeah, I think I'm going to do some Tooth and Tail. Um, I really had fun with that yesterday, and I'd like to play more. And like I said, this is a little incomplete, so I'm going to take a couple minutes, and then I'm going to switch over to Tooth and Tail, alright?